Welcome back to the SharePoint framework. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build and deploy your first web part. Something to take note before we start the web part of the SharePoint tutorial, right? Do take note that if you are following my video and you are trying out um, SharePoint online version 1.13.x, right? So take note that, you know, as of, uh, you know, November 23rd to 2021, right? Uh, you know, the SharePoint framework version 1.13, which is what I've done my video on. But more important for this project, uh, do take note that as of version 1.13, uh, if you have not uh, noticed, is that um, the local workbench has been removed, right? So if you are trying out the um, development environment and you can't seem to launch workbench like I do, uh, there is a reason, right? Uh, using the latest generator, you no longer has the ability to, you know, launch a um, local SharePoint session, right? So with that, let's go over and start the setup for the web part of the SharePoint development. Okay, so what you want to do is firstly create a directory which I've done right uh, in my C drive, SPFX. Next, what you want to do is, you know, um, I like to make a new project called, uh, let's see, yep, offers, no, let's do Sessi, which is the later topic. Uh, SharePoint. Right. Okay. Then next, let's hop over to the directory. What you want to do here is to uh, use Yomen to generate the SharePoint code for this website. Okay. And you will notice that a couple of the questions, such as you know the on-premise and stuff, uh, is no longer there. Oops. Microsoft okay. spelling error. So simple things like this tends to throw us off the track. Okay, you can see that you know we are inside the SharePoint client side solution generator version 1.13.1. Okay, so we'll use back the same name. Uh, as you can see, right, you no longer have the ability to choose on prime means SharePoint. So uh, and more importantly, I think that is more of a FYI than, you know, a choice, right? Because you really don't really have a choice, right? Now, you can actually choose to allow the tenant admin to deploy solutions to all sites or selected site. For this tutorial, we're going to only do it for, you know, particular site, right? Uh, we're not doing any API call or web API access for this tutorial, so we're going to select no. Okay, good thing is that, you know, uh, they have added the adaptive card extension, I believe, uh, to the later version, right? So for this basic tutorial, we're going to go into the web part. Now, what is your web part uh, name, right? Let's do CC SharePoint. Okay, CC SharePoint description, we can leave it there for now. Uh, also, I think in the later version, uh, 1.13, they no longer have uh, Knockout as part of the framework, right? So you can choose between React and no JavaScript. What it does is it allows you to have a base, you know, uh, scaffolding of uh, the Java framework that you're familiar with. But, you know, it's no big deal, right? You can still use Java framework in your code editor uh, or any Java framework that you are familiar or JavaScript framework that you're familiar with in uh, the code editor. Right? For this tutorial, we're not doing any JavaScript uh, framework in particular. So we're going to select no. So you can see that um, the packages are being created. And you get the usual warnings and errors. Uh, I mean, warnings in terms of vulnerability. You okay? can choose to safely ignore that for now. 
and then I'll fast forward this to the when it completes and we can go through how do you configure your initial page so that it serves your SharePoint online Okay, while it's doing, let me just clear my cache so we can start from scratch. Okay, for those of you who have not set up your Microsoft 365 tenant, uh, you know, stay tuned. I'll do a video, a very quick video on how you can configure your um, SharePoint in your Microsoft 365 or Office 365 uh, um, tenant itself. Okay, it's done, and we can start to play with uh, Gulp Surf. But however, uh, there are a few ways to run this. First, let's um, start with the base uh, configuration, right? So let's go to Visual Code. You can actually use it, use any of the uh, code editor, right? So go to open the folder okay and then uh, you can then go into the respective configuration so what you want to do is first go to config then go to serve.json that is where you know uh, gulp surf will serve the web page right so you can see by default a bit bigger okay it doesn't change the SharePoint site that you have so you need to enter your SharePoint site URL right so you have not if you have not have a developer account uh, you can and has a company account then do put in the company uh, SharePoint site right so I'm gonna key in my uh, developer account SharePoint site dot SharePoint dot com. Okay, and then just save, right? You can do a control S, but you know, we just go to here and do save. So once that is done, I think Microsoft is trying to catch up with the way Linux does its uh, development, right? Here you can see LS command. You can use ls, which is very similar to the list command in Linux, right? Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is to run this command, go surf, right? So if you have not um, changed that config, you will see that the browser, you will have problem with the browser. But not to worry, uh, I'll show you another way to you know, navigate the SharePoint site later. So however, before we start, if you have not trust your dev cert, Remember to do it now, right? Trust dash dev dev set, right? Okay, I've trusted before, uh, but you can see that you know it has built another trusted for it, right? So once that's done, we can start to play with our SharePoint online. So let's clear screen and do a go. Surf. Okay, my default browser is Firefox, so it will launch a Firefox browser. Okay, so since SharePoint is used mainly for internal site, you know, you need to then key in the password of the okay I've added on additional security for my administrator and to make it super secure I have also enabled Cisco Dual MFA solution, which 
in my test environment, I have two separate phones to do it, right? It's not something you do for production, but you know, just for showing security, right? Uh, you know, making sure that I'm heavily protected is one way of, uh, you know, aligning with my Draco Cybersecurity channel, right? So once that's done, it'll bring you to your SharePoint site. Okay, in the past, you will see uh, localhost, right? Over right now, you don't, right? You will see only your online SharePoint. The good thing is you can still add your local SharePoint uh, development into your online SharePoint directly, right? So this is something that uh, allows you to quickly test, edit, and, you know, uh, see how it looks on your actual SharePoint website itself. Okay, so that's how easy it is to quickly launch uh, SharePoint, right? Now, uh, as promised, I'm going to show you another way to do launch the SharePoint website uh, without having to configure the initial config, right? So if you have not done any changes on the visual code, right? If you did not do any changes to serve.json, um, for those of you who are familiar, you can always do uh, gulp serve minus no browser, right? And that will not launch the um, URL defined in the surf.json file. So we'll let it finish. For those of you who are new to the uh, to SharePoint development, right after you see the reload, you know it means that you're good to go. So instead of uh, launching it automatically, you can now then key in your SharePoint website. And it will bring you to the uh, SharePoint site itself, right? I've um, already signed in. Oh, since I did not remember my previous sign-in, show you how secure you can be. I'm going to do this using my mobile number and my dual MFA. Remember it. Okay, and likewise, you will be brought to the SharePoint website. Wait for a short while for it to load. Okay, seems that loaded. There was some issue with the loading, right? So, no issue. Uh, just reload the Gulp Surf with no browser, and then now, same thing, right? We can get the local web part loaded into SharePoint, right? So that's pretty much what it does on the web part. Okay, with that, I've come to the end of the tutorial, right? We have done basically uh, build and deploy the first web part onto uh, your SharePoint online. In the next video, I'll show you how to configure the web part and deploy it into your SharePoint web page.